Well, good day, everybody. Welcome to Canada. It's maple sap time, maple syrup time, and we are going to be going from maple sap to maple syrup, start to finish. In this video, mmm, fresh maple syrup, gift from nature, nature's nectar, it's delicious. Really good. Very good. <laughs> Daddy. Do you know where that syrup came from? Daddy made it to me. Yeah, Daddy made it. Oh my. Taste it. I sound delicious. Delicious? <laughs> What does it taste like? It's so it's dirty. What does it taste like? Does it taste like anything? Nope. Nope. Not, Not yet. Alright guys, as we get all our buckets and spiles and everything put together, I thought I would talk to you guys a little bit about how maple syrup flows. So, all we need to know is that in the spring, you tap. And then at some point in time, it stops flowing really well and you can't tap because it gets too hot and then the sap gets gross and it gets bitter and then you gotta stop. And plus you get flies and then it turns all milky. Anyway, nature's gonna pretty much tell you when that's done, but it gets when it gets too hot and it doesn't go below zero or below the point of freezing. Maybe you'll go out and do it yourself. If not, you can always go on a little tour. There's tours all over the place for maple sugar shacks and they're, they're happy to invite you out there, pay a few bucks, go on the sugar shack, get some fresh maple syrup, put it on some pancakes, which is what we intend to do and you're gonna be enjoying a little bit of nature's treat. All right, we got all our spiles out. I think, I gotta do a count. I really gotta do a count, but I think we got 30 or 40 buckets out, which is the most we've ever done. We added another 12 or 13 buckets this year. We should have a good yield as long as the weather cooperates. It's pretty much all up to mother nature. If it goes really hot, really fast, we're gonna get nothing, but it fluctuates between positive and negative, we're gonna be all good. If you guys wanna support the channel, Buy yourself a wood beard shirt. Uh, they'll be down, linked down below and uh, on Teespring. So that'll help me keep things going. And maybe next year we'll build a sugar shack. What do you think? Should we build a sugar shack? Maybe we'll get a sponsor for an evaporator and they'll build a whole sugar shack around it. What do you think? Sponsor? Looking at you. If not, we got to do more redneck boiling, which is fun too. Either way, we're going to be doing it. Look, buddy, there's a lot in there. That's mm, not bad. Quite a bit. Can you get it out? Pretty tricky, huh? Yeah. So you hold it, push it against a tree. Push. 
Good. Okay, now you got it. Now grab carefully, and it's gonna come out. All of a sudden, it's gonna drop. Okay, you got it. This is heavy. Yeah. Oh, it's really heavy. Now drop it. Oh, look at the mother load in it. Ooh, that's got a lot. That one's ready down. It's the best bucket yet. Well, there's better ones on top over there. Probably the best one. Yeah. So we had some really warm weather uh, last two days, but that's actually not good. It's the temperature differential that we're looking for. So it uh, didn't go below zero. It didn't go below freezing point last night, I should say. But it does, if it doesn't go below freezing and above, it just stops flowing really good. And plus it's not sunny. And there's the thing about pressure. Yeah, anyway. So we're getting a little bit, but not much. Hopefully things switch around. I think it's gonna get cold again for the next few days. So we might be on hiatus because it's actually not going to get above uh, the point of freezing, so it's not gonna flow. But later next week, it will, so we'll resume then. But uh, we might have enough to start a boil today. See how she goes. You should have worn a jacket. Yeah. Where's your jacket holding? In the cabin. Why didn't you wear a jacket? Here, hold it. <laughs> the cost, cost of syrup. If every child had to go get their sugar in the forest, I think there'd be a lot less sugar consumed. <laughs> 40 to 1. That's like one square of a caramel There's bar. In there. Dude, you're just weak. There's nothing in there. They put, open it then. There's nothing in there. Very funny. Mush. There's nothing in there. Come on, let's see. There's nothing in there. Oh. Open it then. Oh. Open it. There's nothing in there. Dude. Oh. There's nothing in there. Oh. Time there's nothing in there. Yeah, you're just faking your job. I'm watching that and I'm gonna open it after. Got it in there finally. Very funny. I knew it the whole time. I think the funny part of that is that it inspired you to actually carry it up because you wanted to see what was in the bucket. <laughs> I knew there was nothing in there. There you go. And you gotta make sure you put the back ones on. Two, two clicks at the back and be good enough so the wind doesn't blow it off. The good news is, I only lost a half a pail. That's it. <laughs> Thankfully, not even a half a pail. That was, uh, these lids were on tight. So I didn't lose any of those. 
That was close. <laughs> that was really close. All right, we're just gonna filter our sap right now. And I found a pretty simple, inexpensive way is a t-shirt. Um, probably if you use cheesecloth, it would be better, finer filter, but I'm not all that particular about my syrup. So I just use whatever I got. So I'm just gonna put it over top like that. And then once we do the first boil, in the vat, we have to take it off and then we have to boil it more carefully on the stove because this is obviously way too big to do a finished product. So pull it off, we'll put it on the stove. So I'll filter it once again, once it gets down to a lot more concentrate than this. So let's dump this in here. We'll filter it out. I'll get the most of the wood bits out and then we can dump it into the vat. it for today oh so I'd say we probably have maybe 10 inches on the back this is 24 across by 24 across by 10 inches deep so we probably have a couple liters of syrup in there what do you think does it taste like anything actually a bit sugary but not much not much 2% sugar yeah yeah not much we got to boil that off <laughs> I think we gotta pound this out a little bit. That thing. Shit. Yes. Impressed on? I am impressed. This is very, very nice. <laughs> Not nice looking, but oh ingenious though. It's function functionable. Oh yeah, it looks good. Actually it looks like it's uh, very functional. torrential rain last night so the uh, normally dry cedar sticks that are on the trees are slimy they don't break very nice So uh, we don't know about combustion. Well, we got no smoke coming out of the chimney. Well, if you look at the chimney, which you're not showing, I'm showing it right now. Oh, are you? Yeah, like magic. Magic through editing. He's showing you the smoke burning. Like if you look through the chimney, there's no smoke coming out of the chimney. So the temperature of the fire is warm enough to actually burn the smoke off. So we're getting really complete combustion. So it's a really clean burn. It's two stages with clean burn. One is uh, you need a lot of oxygen and your wood has to be dry. So if, you're dr if your wood is wet, it's not going to have complete combustion because it doesn't get hot enough. So if you have complete combustion, you're going to get more efficiency. You're not actually boiling the water that's in the wood in order to boil the water that's on top of the wood fire. So shorten it up. Is this a good boiler or not? This seems to be working very efficiently. There seems to be enough uh, air infiltration to keep the fire burning clean. Um, 
and it seems like there's enough it's actually containing the heat because i'm not like it, i don't feel a lot of heat coming out so it's staying in and focusing its heat on the actual container that's boiling all right so now we got too much heat going atop this will turn into a blast furnace we got to get all the heat sucked up the chimney and out we don't have a damper in the actual chimney section we don't have a damper in our custom made <laughs> boiler either so we got to figure out how to stop the airflow from going all the way up the chimney and out and concentrate it where we want it which is on the the liquid we don't want to just keep feeding this fire and have it just escape up so i think kevin's going to attach a piece of metal on a stick and try to put it on top like a hat <laughs> <laughs> So now the fire is not roaring as loudly because all that air is not getting sucked up. Oh, through the chimney. We got some steam rocking now. Let's go bath water tent. There, like, you gotta put cook through the damper until that thing falls on us. Don't catch it because it's probably like <laughs> it's probably a thousand degrees. Well, we got. 10 inches of sap to boil. So that's the first for us. That's the first time we've ever had that much sap boiling on our homemade boiler. That's pretty impressive. That's gonna boil so much more efficiently now. We're gonna burn so much less wood, so much less ten time. We just throw it in there, boil it down, and eat it. Sweet. Literally. Dude, is that your jump? Yeah, but I added another one because I was doing something else, but I forgot to take it out. Jump so I don't get to go flying. Maybe that might happen again. But... Alright, guys, as you know, I tried to get a sponsor for this video. It did not happen. We did not get our evaporator. So we're out here doing what rednecks do in Canada making maple syrup from homemade contraptions. <clears throat> I'm sure you've all done it especially my Canadian friends. So I'm sponsoring myself. You can buy these t-shirts on teesprings.com. The link will be down in the description. They've got a list of all the different animals I've eaten on the channel. It's a pretty extensive list. They've got uh, hoodies, t-shirts, long sleeve shirts, and even girl shirts. Because I know there's a couple of you out there that still watch. So yeah, if you want to support the channel, buy a shirt and we can keep this thing rocking. Because I'm having fun doing it, and I hope you're having fun watching it. Well, we're getting pretty close to being finished. We're not going to end up with a lot of syrup from this boil. But thankfully, we're just at the start of the season. And we're going to continue to see how much we can produce. But um, you can't just leave it on the fire. You have to take it off, and we have to be doing this properly. We leave it on the fire. What's gonna happen is eventually it's gonna start to bubble up and boil. Bubble up, bubble up, bubble up. And that's when we have to really start paying attention. It could easily spoil. Boil up, cake along the sides, burn. Completely done. So we're getting to the point now where it can almost fit into one pot and then we can finish it probably inside on the stove, uh, but we can also bring it home and do it on a conventional oven. That's how I prefer to do it because I can really adjust the temperature very, very carefully. So that's all we're doing. We just want to get it to the point where there's most of the water is gone and it ends up in a syrup. That's all we're doing. It's pretty straightforward. 
but it's a bit of an art, a bit of a science. Just picked up the shirt here. I want to show you how much stuff we filtered out in the last little bit. Usually I'll take it off uh, well before now and do a, a filter and then do it on the stove at home. Um, I want to show you just how much dirt we'd filtered out. And a lot of people would think that's pretty gross and all that stuff. But um, Don, who was here yesterday, said that our syrup was so much better than the syrup he got from a buddy who uses a uh, a propane boiler because there's no smoke uh, taste to it and all of the farm particulate matter is all taken out so all the maple tree cedar tree whatever else all that drunk just adds flavor to ours so here have a look at this so all of those crumbs are all little wood bits and things like that that we filtered out just at the very end there looks kind of gross but our syrups always really 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 good nobody's ever said that they didn't like it or enjoy it and that maybe is why it's just our little special brew I guess so we're gonna we're out here for the day my mom's here uh, my dad's here so we're just gonna hang out at the cabin and boil so we have the time we have till dinner time if I don't finish by dinner time then we will just continue at home and yeah, have a look inside here my mom's hiding <laughs> <laughs> hiding behind the door she didn't do her hair, so she's embarrassed. So, mind the fog, but there's our two pots. So for all our work, we will end up with some percentage of this, but it'll be quite a bit less than that. Um, it's pretty liquidy. You can tell the consistency there or not, but. So we'll boil that down and there's, of course, there's a little bit left in the pail. We don't want to put it all in there and then have it boil over. But my hands are sticky, which is a good sign means we're on the right track. All right, pretty slow going on the stove here. It's a heating stove. It's definitely gets the chill off inside the cabin, but it's not enough to boil that syrup sap down a syrup. So I think I'm gonna take it home and finish it off on the uh, stove top. And I think next weekend we'll be able to come back out. And I don't think we can finish off this video without making pancakes. So next week's supposed to warm up again. The sap will be flowing. And I think we can uh, do a, run in a second batch of uh, syrup and uh, finish it off, put on some pancakes at the cabin. What do you guys think? Make it a big family thing or whoever's up for it. On our second pole here now, running solo. So you guys get action cam. First person. Hopefully we're rocking this the right way. Not sure how much stop we're gonna have today. It's been flowing, but slowly. Next couple of days should be really good. I'm hoping we have enough to even bother collecting because it was a fair drive to come out here. It's like barely any. Not, not flowing super good. That's not too much. Kind of a slow, slow, slow drip. Expecting uh, with the sun going the way it is right now, it'd flow better than that. Barely going. Anyway, we'll clean these buckets up and hopefully we get at least a couple that are full. got a little bit more and see how the bucket being frozen is not a good sign that means it's not quite heated up in the bush here the good thing about it though is when you uh, you see there's some drips around here that could be just from me splashing see that one's a better flow when you get a drip every second you're on the right track drip drip that's drip pause pause drip so it does it does go faster than that it's not gonna happen today 
It's a two, and that's about a couple inches. On our first draw, uh, we did three pails like this. And that produced two liters of syrup. So that's what we're shooting for next. So it looks like we'll do probably a couple more pulls to get our, our another boil out of it. And not too much in this one at all. Probably didn't have to bother collecting today. See the flow on that one's drip, pause, drip, pause, drip. So, not at full tilt, that's for sure. Good news is it won't take that long to clean all these buckets up. And then we'll probably wait two more days or so with these temperatures and we'll do a big, big boil. Probably just in time for the weekend. It's nice to have everybody out with us. Sit around the fire, do a big boil, make some pancakes, enjoy some of our fresh syrup. See, this is just getting to the point where it's dripping. It's actually pretty cold in the woods here, so. That one maybe looks better, but only because it's a smaller bucket. That feels heavier. That might be one of the better ones. Let's check the flow on that one. Drip, 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 pause, drip. So a little bit faster. This one here, let's check this one out. Oh, it's hard to get these lids off. But you got to keep the lids on or else you're going to get all that gross stuff on top. You don't want that in there. That's a good, good bucket. So those two were probably the most productive. Let's see this one. Drip, pause, drip. Yeah, that's not bad. It's almost a drip, drip. Getting there. That's about half a pail off of six six or so. Head toward the cabin, we might have one pail and then we have to go back up and do the road ones. The road ones typically do better because they warm up with the road and the sun. I get full sun out that way. Tons of, tons of snow left in the woods here, that's for sure. We had some of our brush piles over there that we're starting to clean up the woods a little bit. Let those saplings grow up. Let the woods turn over. As we get closer to the cabin, we have two more down there in that tree. And then we have one right at the cabin. I'm thinking the one at the cabin probably doesn't work very good. What we're going to do here is we're going to get all this collected, put it in the vat and leave it in the vat. And it won't spoil as long as it's cool out of the sun, which it is. Oh, there's three on this one. Oh, this is the mother load. This tree's doing really well this year. That might fill us up. Oh, look at that. Check out this one go. That's the drip drip we want. So in another day, this one might fill up. Which is why we're collecting, because we don't want to have them overflow and lose it all. That's no fun. This one seems light, but let's see. That's not bad. Not the worst one. Not the best one either. See that one? Not on the sun side of the tree anymore. The sun's at the back side of the tree. So it doesn't seem to be flowing as good. And this is on the 
shade side of the tree. Let's see this one as a comparison. So it's kind of in between there. I think the front part of that tree is working better now. Maybe these ones work better in the morning, but in the long run, it's definitely the front side. Oh, almost lost it. Completely frozen. That means that it's gone below zero overnight, and that was all flow from yesterday. Plus probably a little bit on top, but that one's not even going. Getting zero out of that one. It's always weird when you get a zero. Anyway, we got this. So one full one anyway pretty much full we'll load that up in the sled here make our way back to the cabin and this stops a lot cleaner and clearer than the first run that's for sure We have one empty pail, and then we have three more load pails. These ones don't have any holes in them, so we won't get any spillage. I'm gonna unload my food bag, put the camera bag back in, you never know. The main camera, something interesting might happen. And then one more. Pail. I actually wanted to show you in here I have this is um, maple sugar so if you boil let's see here what do I got in here a bunch of snacks so this is sap this is this year's sap syrup uh, it's really thick too I like it loop is super super thick so if you boil past the sugar uh, the syrup stage you get into a sugar so this is like 100% of the water removed this is like I don't know probably like 98 98% 97 I don't know somebody should check that out how much water is left in the syrup because I don't know but that's the syrup that's a thick 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 syrup you'd pay a lot of money for that one so once you boil it down past that you end up with the sugar the sugar is very storable because um, it doesn't always end up with chunks like this. Sometimes you can get a really fine grain. It looks like a brown sugar. Let's see if we can get some of the brown sugar out. It's mostly going to be the chunks. But you can see the sugar. If you do it properly, it ends up like that. I'm going to take a chunk of sugar. And my son likes to eat them like this. Because they're super, super sweet. So it's basically like eating candy. Maple candy. But if you guys are interested in sh me showing you how I do this, let me know in the comments and I'll do a batch of syrup down to sugar. And I think this is like three years old now, just to store it in the peanut container. This will last for years and years and years this way. This will last, they say like six weeks, but if you freeze it, like don't put the t lid on tight, freeze it, don't put, don't fill it all the way to the top. I think this stuff will last indefinitely. You might get a little bit of mold on top, but the mold's not going to bother you um, unless you have a mold allergy, in which case you probably don't want to eat it. But if you just peel the mold off and you don't get too much of the aroma in there, the stuff will last a long time. In the fridge, I keep it. I've kept stuff for a year. You probably shouldn't, but you know, follow what's on the label. <laughs> so, anyway. This stuff will, I think this is the way to go if you want to do long-term storage. But this is amazing thing. This comes out of a tree. It literally comes out of a tree. That to me is amazing. Like these trees over here, this is, this is what we're getting out of it. This is what we're extracting out of it. It's like sugar. That's pretty cool. All right, let's go, uh, let's get going and collect the rest of it. Check this guy out. This guy's ripping. I only got one pail. The front of the property on the roadside. Oh no, now I'm full. I go all the way back. <laughs> That's what I get. 
for thinking that whole woods was going to be the same. This thing's ripping. Full sun. If this one's as full as the last one, we're going to be done here, and it is. Oh no. Oh no. It's a good thing though. We gotta go get the sled. We are full already. Look at that. That's one and a half buckets. That one is done. These are the big ones. That are also in the full sun. Almost full. Some people say that you can just get rid of that ice on the top but I know for a fact that you can't because I've seen pails freeze all the way to the top <laughs> so don't tell me that there's zero sugar in that just because it's frozen to the top I mean, maybe this is straight up ice water but I'd rather take the chance and boil it Because like I said, I've often had pails that were completely frozen to the top. Let's check this one here. Ooh, that one's getting there too. Starting to make sense that we collected today. I think by tomorrow afternoon, those buckets would be pretty much done. Completely overflowing. This one's only got a half a day left, I think, before it flows over. We're full on that one again. Well, we got a pretty good load here. We have four full buckets and we still have we still have more to empty. That's it's gonna be at least five buckets because there's already one in there. So let's do some let's do some math here. Last time we did three buckets and got two. So if we have six buckets, that means we're gonna have four liters of syrup collect it from sap. So that's probably about what we had last time. More or less. So we got twice as much as the first draw. By the looks of things. It's a lot of water to boil off. Something that would not be funny is if that vat leaks. That would be a disaster. So that vat is about halfway to the top now. And we've still got more to come. Okay, so these are all empty. Let's go hustle up some more. That's a pretty good start. A couple more pails to go along the road. Looks like we're gonna have about eight, which will produce about 
five liters of syrup altogether. It's not bad for two extra days and we're just getting started. We are about three or four inches from the top of that. Being interesting to know the exact volume of that, but it's a lot. That's uh, I think we're probably 24 inches high. I know we're 24 wide, 24 the other way. It's probably 24 high. You guys figure out that is, and figure out how many liters of syrup we should end up with. I know we started off with 10 inches last time about 10 inches last time and that produced two liters so if we double that we should have four liters or so probably more than four i'd say maybe six liters of syrup in there there you go that's your hard work yesterday oh yeah it's your sap can i get it in a pretty jar it's pretty as it gets mason it's pretty big actually that's a lot of <laughs> that's a lot of sap a liter hmm. Well, I got I got fancy jars coming. So. Oh, really? Are you gonna sell it? No, it's not. It's too much work to sell it, dude. Yeah, that's thick. It's thick. I'm gonna try. Uh, Real thick. So the so the neighbor down the road did some with. Uh, he's got a proper boiler with a proper, um, well, proper as in like he did it new school. So he's got the no smoke gets in his boil, and then he's got uh, a propane turkey fryer that he boils the final. I tried it wasn't great like this stuff is like it's delicious full, it's full of flavor it's full of flavor that stuff kind of tasted a little bit like french fries and i'm not sure if it's because he was adding some like is it when it froths he was putting canola oil in the in the froth to prevent it from frothing up too much and i guess that's why do you put oil in this no, that's not right that well they call it, that's the old school way to do it apparently and then no. they used to do it apparently they used to hang a um a ham bone on the side of the thing and it would it would froth up and then it would make the froth the bubbles not it wouldn't overflow the so, froth is impurities you could scoop it off well they do they they sell little scoops but he added canola oil and his final boil smelled a little bit like carnival french fries <laughs> and the final taste was very very light and you might see on my instagram actually i posted his jars and they were very it was very clear not this this is like <laughs> this looks like used motor oil and it's good though it's very it good really good it's very sweet very good uh but his it was very very clear very looked like canola oil but i don't know to each his own maybe the second boil will be his tap his trees are uh, first tap so like he's never they've they're 50 years old and never been tapped so it was first year doing it so let's see if this next boil is any better or different i guess it's different it's not better or it's just different i like mine better well, we've never had it at full tilt so let's see how she goes it's gonna be a lot of heat but we got a lot of water to boil hard work watching this boil. This is like this, but it's five feet long. Did you see a picture of it? I know what it is. I know what they look like. The one I was going to get was two by six. Yeah, okay, I think that's what it is. Oh, we got a full boil, boiling so much you can't even see the bottom. It's 
So I did take one pail out just to get it going, but I think we can probably add the other pail back in. So that's um, six pails, I think, all together. We we're able to boil. This boiler's working really well. 30 gallons. You think we have 30 gallons in there? Well, each gallon's five, or each pail's five gallons. 30 gallons. All right, so do the math on that. Figure out how many gallons of syrup we should be able to make from 30 gallons. You guys Probably do the math. like less than one gallon. <laughs> yeah. Well, if there's 30, then we get almost a gallon. It's not bad. All right, good morning, guys. We uh, didn't finish uh, the boil yesterday. Uh, ran out of time. So we're starting back up today. We're going to do another pull. Uh, probably not get a lot of sap today because it's cloudy. I don't think it got super cold last night, so it's not the ideal conditions for flow, but we're going to collect what we have here and then we'll be current. Uh, I think we're going to make pancakes today and we might be wrapping this video up, but it doesn't mean we're wrapping up the syrup season. We're going to keep going. We'll probably see just how much syrup we can make. So you have to stay tuned and figure out as the season goes on at the cabin here how much we can actually produce. So, so far, we've only finished the two liters thus far. By the end of this boil, we'll probably have another four to six or seven, eight liters maybe at the most. But uh, looking pretty good. So let's go do our collection and see what we got overnight. All right, so that draw I ended up with four full pails, amazingly, which is super awesome. And I think this vat, thankfully, is going to take all four. And then I'm going to go out. I still have half the buckets to check, which is great news. We're going to have a full day boil now, for sure. Let's load these up. Uh, Don and Mark, they're all up at the sawmill, trying to cut some shakes out for uh, Mark. He's, he's building a structure in his backyard, so he cut down some cedar trees from... Kirk's place, that's the place we're working on uh, the coyote. And he brought them over here and now they're milling them, so they're gonna make shakes. I wanna talk to you about my sled. Shakes, sled, my sled. Uh, you see me drive this around all over the place. This is a wicked, wicked, wicked sled. It's got runners on the bottom, super durable. They sent me these uh, not too long, or last year I think it was, Pelican, the Pelican company. Um, they're great for pulling around ice fishing stuff. Um, winter camping, use this all the time. And obviously now for maple syrup. So these runners, they're plastic runners, they screw on. Um, I'm not sure if it, I think it comes as a kit separately, but you can also buy it like this. At least they gave it to me like this anyway, and it was wrapped. So I do think it comes like that, but it's got a super deep bucket, obviously. So you can fit lots of, lots of gear. It has a cover that goes over top of it, which is wicked for winter camping, especially because it's uh, it's got elastics around the outside. And uh, I'm not selling this uh, Pelican. They didn't pay me any money. They just sent me the sleds. But I've been using this for two years, um, abusing it. And we dragged it all the way to Puddle Lake and back, all through all the trees. And like, <laughs> it's still, you still really couldn't tell that it's it's been so roughly used as I've put this thing through. So consider getting yourself a Pelican if you want a workhorse, uh, I would recommend immediately switching out the ropes that they come with. You can get some of this climbing rope, climbing type rope, and just drill some new holes, bigger holes, tie a little knot in the end, and then you're good to go. And then I've added an extra mod to this where I've drilled out other little holes and I've put loops um, so that I can tie. I put one on either side. So when I cover it, I can put the cover over top and then I can lash a rope through all the way down. There's uh, all the way to the bottom, there's three on each side. So six in total. And this thing works awesome. You can stuff this thing, you don't want to, but you can stuff it probably double the height. It does become tippy, obviously, once it, the weight gets uh, further away from the bottom, uh, but it works really well. And then Jeremy actually put some extra mods on his where he put, um, bars across and attach them to his hips you'd have to check his out uh, one wild crafter he has a on uh puddle lake i think I, I i i think i might have it on on my puddle lake video as well so you go back and check that out 
I'll dump that one in, but I don't know if you can tell, but it's all the way, almost all the way to the top. I could probably afford to put one more in. Just takes so long to get that to boil when it's full to the top. I probably add one more just in case. So I'll have three buckets to go up to the top there. Um, Cause I don't want to not have enough room. So yeah, that's uh, eight buckets today. Jeez, I was not expecting eight buckets. That's great. All right, next step, we gotta go to the wood pile and get wood and stuff her in there and stuff her in there and stuff her in there and stuff her in there. We figure we probably go down about an inch an hour. So if that's 24 inches, 24 hours, but it doesn't work out quite like that because of course, as it gets lower, it increases the boil speed. Here's our wood pile. It's uh, at the front of the property because it gets full sun up here and dries. If we put it back in the cedar bush, we are not going to have any dry wood anytime soon. We actually get a giant wood splitter coming. The thing is massive. If the sponsorship works out, it should be on its way in a few weeks. You guys are interested in seeing that. Apparently it's like a dinosaur. It just basically completely shreds wood super fast. And because we're getting all this wood from free from arborists, we can go through it really fast, set it up here to dry. Get it, pop them. Can you pop them? You have to catch them first. <laughs> Not the tack though. Why don't you get that one out? They're too fast. What kind of bubbles? The bubbles everywhere. More bubbles. It doesn't bubble got me. I got my pocket. No way! Why can't I get it? Did you get it? Everybody run. <laughs> so she can't see you now. Oh, where did Lena go? Where'd Lena go? I can't see her. I'm under the tree. You're behind the tree? Are you behind the tree this <laughs> way? <laughs> 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 no, where did she go? Let's keep going around. Is she behind the tree? <gasps> I see you. You're with Uncle Chris. <laughs> this is pretty impressive. We have it filled right to the top and it's on a hard boil. I think it's the first time we've ever got the full vat all the way to the top to boil that that much. That much. That much. That much. That much. What are you eating? No, no. Raspberries. Raspberries? Yeah. They good? Mm-hmm. Yep. Did you have fun with the bubbles? Yeah, the bubbles are fun. Those berries match your hair. Where'd you get your hair color from? Mmm, <laughs> <laughs> good. It got seeds in it. No, it got seeds in it. Got yeah. seeds in it? A little bit. A little bit of got seeds. Not too bad. What's that noise? That's the fire. 
the fire. Yeah, popping. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah. That's genius. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, I'm your friend. Oh, it's pancake. Through pancake. That's my pancake. Yeah. I'm gonna make a little dipping station. Here, can you hold that? Okay. Okay, don't drop it. You got it? Two hands. Mommy has to use his hands for cert. Two hands, Lena. Use two hands to hold it. <laughs> two hands. It just tickles. It tickles? <laughs> yeah. You ready? Oh, so yummy. So yummy. Tiki bee. I said, Tiki bee bee bee. You hear the chickadee, yes. <laughs> You hear the chickadee? I hear the chickadee, yeah. Here, do you want to take a bite? Take a bite, tell us how it tastes. Here, I got a little bite on there. Tell me if the syrup's any good. <laughs> you missed it. <laughs> yes. Yes? Yummy. Oh, yummy. yummy. There you go. Yummy maple syrup. It's good? That's good. Very good? <laughs> really good. Very good. Daddy. Do you know where that syrup came from? Where the syrup came from? Daddy made it to me. Yeah, Daddy made it. Yeah. Daddy and Uncle Chris made it. Came from the trees. I love it. You love it. So that came out of the tree. Put your finger in there. Take some. <laughs> oh my. Taste it. I feel delicious. Delicious? <laughs> Mom. <laughs> Here, take the little bite there. Love what a bite. Yeah. I'll just see some more. Now you're eating. It's so good, eh? I'll just see some more pieces. Thank you, Lena. That'll stop it. Oh. You know, it's good, Don. It's excellent. Worth all the work. Delicious. Yep. <laughs> Every bit of it. Still good? Still good. Still good. So good. I just cleaned your plate. I need some more water. Any more water? Any more water? Okay, I'll get you some. Mm. Fold it up like a sandwich. Yeah, baked uh, pancake burrito. Oh, yeah, that's good syrup. Good pancake, too. <laughs> we need some tables. Look at that. That's 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 something. Tables next. That's a lot of like. I just might as well eat the napkin. I love it. Napkins taste great as long as they're soaked in maple syrup. <laughs> it's just, just extra fiber. Fiber. Okay. Yep. That tastes good. It does taste good. Yeah. Here's like a beaver tail. Eat it. People won't know what a beaver tail is. They'll think it's a literal beaver tail. <laughs> All you Americans out there, you should go and look up beaver tails in Canada. They sell them in the capital in Ottawa. <laughs> <laughs> they taste like candy. They're deep fried goodness. Deep fried batter covered in powdered sugar and... Cinnamon. Cinnamon. Syrup. Syrup and whipped cream, I think. Yeah, whipped cream. Okay, so glamorous, right? Well, the kids are gone to bed. It's Kevin's kid. That's Kevin's daughter, by the way. Lena. And that was her mom, Rachel. Kevin's wife. So, I have some time to myself. I get to contemplate life. I'm actually waiting for the stove to heat up so that I can cook my pancakes. I can't eat those weedy pancakes. I gotta eat the non-glutinous pancakes so i've got some batter pre-made here this is egg vanilla and almond milk i don't think you're allowed to call it milk anymore almond water almond juice because i don't drink milk either so i'm gonna mix this up and make myself a batter seems like i have too much liquid 
but we'll see. Just gonna mix it in the bag here. So we've got our maple syrup, and I like to eat my pancakes with a banana, so I'm gonna do that. Since I have all the time in the world, we're letting that sap outside boil down. It's probably not even gonna be done today. So much sap, it's crazy. Just gonna mix this up, add it to there, and I actually wanna talk to you guys about a future plan I've been considering. So this book, actually, I read this book. It's not really a read book, but it's like a plans book. Little House of My Own, 47 Grand Designs for 47 Tiny Houses. It's interesting is it's like, I think the published date was 1987. So this like predates all the tiny home movement stuff. But it's a, it's a really cool book if you guys are into tiny houses and cabins and things like that. It's got like tons of different designs of like fixed, uh, fixed structures. I see the picture there. It's got fixed structures, like basically tiny houses throughout history. It's got little garages, um, cabins, sheds, specialty use stuff. Like, look at these. That's a pretty cool little house. These are all like things you can really throw up quickly. So if you think like this cabin design was just like something we kind of came up with, probably not like 100% unique ideas, but ideas that we have experienced throughout our lifetimes by seeing you know different cottages from when we were kids. My uh, grandfather actually owned a, a tourist camp up north. He had 16 tiny houses on it that he would rent out to other people. Um, and that's where I grew up. I grew up on, on that property, basically running around on a, a bunch of acres lakefront all summer long we'd go off and collect berries and come back and my mom would make pies and we were basically left on our own to roam on this huge acreage lakefront and we would visit and we would basically have a round of visitors different kids to play with who came from the city which is basically southern ontario to come up and basically live like we did every day and they would pay money to rent these cabins it was an interesting thing the conversation always went, uh, came up with like, what do you guys do out here? I'm like, you guys are vacationing here. <laughs> You're vacationing where I live. We do this stuff every day. We vacation every day. So that's a little taste of my childhood anyway. But yeah, different, bunch of different, you know, people live in small houses forever because they were, it was hard to build a big house, especially if you have to do it by hand. But um, aside from like building a sugar shack, which I think would be fun to do, um, although as we found, we, we don't really need a sugar shack. There was this one really cool design that I had, I had taken a picture of and I put it uh, on my computer. I had it on my computer for a long time. And now that we have a sawmill, I'm thinking this would be something that would be interesting to do. Um, if, if Kevin's up for it, milling it up. And if he's not, well, he can mill up all the pieces and I can build it, but it's called the raft house. It's eight foot plus seven foot plus a deck. So it's only 56 square feet. You can pull it behind a car or truck. So it's meant to be lightweight. But the cool thing about this plan is that you can actually sleep in it. So it's not a, it's not a winter ice fishing shack, although it could double as an ice fishing shack. It's actually for summer fishing. So it's got pontoons to, to float the thing. Uh, they have it listed as seven inch thick styrofoam buoyant billets. But I know now they have uh, open containers and I think they have foam filled containers too, that uh, if they puncture, they'll still float. But yeah, the idea would be to like build this either here or up north. If we built it here, we'd have to transport it up north, which is something that we could obviously do. But so I guess what I'm doing is I'm pitching is if like, do you guys, do you think this would be a cool build? to put this uh, raft house together. I don't know if this has actually ever been built. I wonder if it's like somebody just like came up with a concept and never built it because they don't have a finished build and <laughs> it's just a picture. So the proof might be, uh, <laughs> if it might, it might not have ever been done. I, I maybe I should contact the, uh, the author of this to see if there's actually have a picture of this ever being built. Because as you know, floating things is a very tricky thing to do. So yeah, I wonder, I wonder if it's ever been built. So would you guys be interested in seeing us, uh, you know, an overnighter and a fishing on this and actually building it? 
I think it would be really cool. So anyway, I'll leave that guys with you. Leave that down in the comments if you think it would be interesting to to see us put that together. So let's see how this fire going. The fire is not going, so it's going to be slow. So we're going to mix our uh, get our batter mixed up anyway. It can sit in the bag while we're waiting for that fire to heat up. Let's get this going. We'll mix it together. Yeah, actually that looks like about the right amount of liquid. I did follow the directions this time. And this is the easiest way to mix this up, is just put it in a bag. If you're ever camping, just grab a Ziploc bag and put your batter in there. You don't have to buy expensive gluten-free batter either. Just get your gluten-free flours and then you're pretty much set to go. You can use it as a, any other type of a mix. Pancake mix is like the easiest thing in the world to make. To buy pre-made pancake mix, I guess, you know, go for it. But this is the absolute easiest way to make pancakes. Just throw it in a bag like that. And then I'll probably cut the corner out here and then just pour it out as I need it. That way we don't have to deal with any mess. And then uh, it, it call, the recipe actually calls for butter, but I'm just gonna put loads and loads of butter in the pan when I cook it. I'm really looking forward to this. I really earned my maple syrup this year and last year and every other year for that matter. You guys ever had pancakes with bananas? It's worth it, man. Plate full of pancakes, two bananas, all set. Put vanilla in your pancake mix. That's the way to go. Fresh maple syrup. Well dudes, the only way you get this like this is if you do it yourself. There's so much satisfaction going into this jar of maple syrup that buying it from the store, buying it from the store you can't appreciate it. Not the same way that's for sure. Well, I'm going to keep that pancake in there and keep it warm, but I am going to put that butter all over the pancakes. All right. Watched everybody else eat. Now it's my turn. That's so good, man. Our maple syrup from start to finish is so much more flavorful than anything you can get from the store. And Canadian maple syrup is pretty good. Make sure you get the authentic kind. You don't get the stuff from Quebec, Ontario, and of course, Northern States, Maine, produce, produce a lot of syrup. Actual, real maple syrup. Make sure it's not some corn syrup derivative or that stuff just garbage compared to this. <clears throat> but I burnt off a lot of calories, so I've earned this and deserved it. I'm not even done yet. We're just getting started. So, I'm gonna keep doing the boil. I'll update you guys in another video as to how much syrup we collected this season. So keep watching the cabin series for that. Um, if you have any questions about how we did it, feel free to leave those down below. If you guys want us to build that raft, the raft cabin, let me know. I think it would be a fun project. I don't think Kevin would be into the raft project as much as me because he's not a fisherman, but I might be able to convince him to spend a night on the raft. If not, he could just help me build it and send me off. I could find somebody else to go with. I'm sure Jeremy would go. Courtney would go. Even Holden, I think Holden would do it. He's really getting into fishing. 
shouldn't have a problem convincing them to go out. It's going to be all pancakes. The best part about this is that I get to contemplate my life out by the evaporator. Alright guys, I'm going to dig in here. Thanks for checking out the channel. You can uh, subscribe or not or whatever. I don't care if you subscribe, but that doesn't mean I don't care about you.